Lazy loading is a great ORM pattern that automatically loads dependent or child data when it is first accessed. The delayed loading is both an advantage and a disadvantage. This tutorial explains both these aspects and the associated pitfalls. EF Core doesn't enable lo lazy loading by default. So this is a point to be noted and we'll talk about this in a moment. Before I explain anything else, let's learn how to enable lazy loading in an EF Core project. There are two methods of doing this, but I'll cover the simpler of the two. First of all, install the NuGet package called Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.Proxies. This package handles most of the complex logic for us. And after this, open the program.cs file and locate the addDB context code and add the option called use lazy loading proxies. This will turn on the lazy loading scheme. The next thing is to modify the model classes and mark the child collections as virtual. For example, in our project we have an item class. This class contains a collection of related invoices. If we want to use lazy loading for this collection, then we have to mark the property as virtual like public virtual i collection whatever so this property has to be marked as public virtual this will enable it to be laid, loaded in a lazy manner so with these steps lazy loading is enabled for the invoices property of the item object and now let's see it in action and you will understand more when i show the code also next let's add an anchor link to make a call to the database this will help us see how lazy loading works. Open the solution explorer and the index.cshtml razor page. Add an anchor link called lazy load of invoices as you are seeing here. This is connected to a handler called lazy load. And next let us open the backing class index.cshtml.cs and add the handler. You can obtain the source code from the downloads. So I will show just the handler part. You can obtain the code and examine the whole project. This code has two simple for each loops. The first loop, the outer loop, fetches all the records from the items table. The inner loop, it accesses the invoices collection of each item. So now we are at an important point. It is at this point that lazy loading comes into action. It automatically makes a database request to fetch the related invoices of an item. It is at this point, the point of access, the point at which this property is accessed for the first time. It is at this point that a request goes to the database. It automatically makes a database request. It fetches the related invoices of an item. The point to note here is that lazy loading is an automatic action. Data is loaded just at the point of need. So this is what has been the plus point of lazy loading. But there is a hidden problem here. Let's turn to the logs. We observe that there is an explosion of SQL queries. There is a trip to database each time the forage loop runs. Because whenever the property invoices is accessed, each time the for each loop runs, the property invoices is accessed and at that point a fresh request to the database goes. This might not be desirable. This can seriously hamper performance because of a trip to the database. And the worst part is that it all happens without any suspicions. Who would suspect two simple loops to raise too many trips to a remote server? It is because of this pitfall that lazy loading is no longer enabled by default. So now you must be clear why lazy loading is not enabled and we have to take such a roundabout, roundabout uh, scheme to get it enabled. So let's now come to the solution. My one line answer is avoid lazy loading if possible. A better strategy is to use eager loading by using include operator. We can add another link and add a handler called eager load to test the whole thing. 
the source code has been attached as a download so you can examine it there also but I'll explain as you can see we have used the include operator to include the invoices also we can now run the application and examine the logs and we verify that there is now only a single query to the remote database so this is an optimization that you can make if required for your situation thank you